It's all good. Okay. Whew, good evening. Yeah. Hmm. I love that song. His presence is heaven to us, right? I love his presence and hmm. his presence is where he speaks to us. His presence is where we get direction from. His presence is where we hear from him at. It's in his presence that we receive healing. It's in his presence that clarity is given to us. His presence is like heaven to us, right? Amen. Amen. Man, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Trust without borders, that's a line I can't get past. I've sang oceans 50 million times and... <laughs> We know it's him taking us past our comfort zone, but for some reason, trust without borders just stuck out to me like crazy. That's not what we're speaking on tonight, but it's really close. Um, there are many that I know of, um, others that I sense or perceive, um, and I'm sure far more that I know nothing of who are in a season or in a place of transition right now. Um, transition takes on many forms, okay? While at one point in our life, we, it might find us transitioning into one area or one particular way, the next season might be completely different than that. Um, might be a different type of transition altogether. And tonight we're going to be continuing in our um, journey of trust, I guess you could say, that we've been on with our Heavenly Father, and, and the message is titled tonight, Trust Through Transition. Um, and in doing this, we're going to see the vitalness that there is in doing just that, in trusting Him, even through the unsteady feelings that often accompany transition. I don't know about you, but um, many of us, we don't like change, right? Any kind of change whatsoever, or, or anything might be upsetting to us, or any kind of transition, or being brought out of our comfort zone, or something like that. And so, um, our scripture for this evening is going to come from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Um, it has a heading in the New King James Version that says, everything in its time. And so we're going to read that now, starting in verse 1. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose. That's the holidays in the first of the year. Get it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the rest of verse 6 there, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow. It means what? Planning and reaping. A time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war in a time of peace. And so when we read that and we come back to verse 1 again, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. You know, those weren't just lyrics to a popular song from before I was born, I will say. <laughs> um, I was actually going to source it to the Beatles and I looked it up today and I'm like, oh, it wasn't the Beatles, it was the birds. I didn't know that. But like I said, I wasn't alive then, so... <laughs> But um, it's not just that. We've all heard that song, I'm sure, right? Yeah, turn, turn, turn. But it actually comes from Scripture. And Scripture which talks of transition. Scripture which speaks of changing seasons, right? And it's also the epitome of being that great example to us that there is a time and a season for everything that God has ordained in our lives as well. All right, and so I want you to think for a moment, okay, those who have gone through transition in your life at some point, which should be all of you, or that you've changed seasons, if we want to call it that, we could literally list, even if we tried to think of um, ones in scripture that we know that have transitioned from one time to another, we could literally list like umpteen of them, couldn't we? Um, Ironically, I even came across like a little picture that somebody had shared on Facebook this week, and it said, list of those in the Bible who at some point in their lives couldn't make sense of the plan God had for them. 
And then it gave the answer, and it said, every human in the Bible I can think of. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. Guess what? If we've ever went, God, I don't understand what you're doing right now, or I don't see where this plan is taking us, or whatever, guess what? We're in good company, because everybody that he's done that with, even throughout Scripture, at some point in the, the moments of that, they had those same feelings. And isn't that just it, right? Either personally or spiritually, we're in good company, Okay, because so were numerous ones that we read of in Scripture. We could name them, right? Moses, Abraham, Noah, who else? We could Joseph the dreamer. <laughs> His life was all about transition and changing seasons, right? How about David from shepherd to king and everything in between and that went on, right? Nicodemus, right? How can I go back into my mother's womb and be born again? That was transition going on. He was coming into a new season. Mary Magdalene, right? To be forgiven of so much, to live one way, and then have it all completely turned around and to live your life following after the Savior, okay? We only get to read about the, the male disciples, but guess what? He had a lot of female followers as well, and she was one of the more prominent ones. Then we get to Simon Peter, right? We get to Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. Talk about transition there. There was so much transition going on. God's like, I'm just going to call you something else from now on because that was rough, right? Think of the transition that happened in his life and the seasons that changed. And even Jesus, did he go through transition in his life as well? He did, right? Yeah. At the age of 30, he's baptized by John the Baptist. He's led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness. He spends 40 days with no food or drink. He's tempted by Satan three times while he's there. And when he comes back, once the enemy finally leaves him alone, he comes back and his whole ministry starts. That was some transition going on, right? And just like each of these, we have to know that there is a time and there is a season for everything that God has ordained in our lives as well. Nothing is by chance with God and nothing is wasted with God. So even if we walk through painful seasons in life, I'm not telling you that God caused that pain or brought that pain on you, but I'm going to tell you that he will not waste that pain. And there will be things that will happen in your healing and in your growth and in the season changing to the next one that are going to make you who you need to be as he carries you along further. Amen? Amen. So many, maybe you'll recognize yourself in this, maybe not, you're in a time of transition right now. Or you're entering into a season change, you might want to call it. And whether those transitions are like just physically in the natural, like geographically or career changes or, or life, um, your walk with God, your employment, you know, all these different kind of things. Maybe it's that, you know, maybe it, it's more spiritually like your walk and the call that he's placed upon your life and this commissioning for the more that he has for you. Maybe you've been able to see your life leading up to this point, and now all of a sudden um, you're about to step into something new. And can any of you relate to that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, having come to, let's say, like a fork in the road, maybe you're going, ooh, you stop for a minute and you say, I've never been here before. I've never been to this place before, never in my life, in my relationship with God, in my walk with him, in my journeying closer to his heart, in the answering the call that he has for my life or the work that he has for my, uh, to accomplish. I've never been at this crossroads yet. I've never seen this fork in the road before. I've never had him lead me this far. Maybe I've gotten close a few times and it scared the bejeebers out of me and I've ran the other way. Maybe he's shown me that there was going to be a fork in the road up ahead, but I kind of slowed the pace a little bit because I didn't know what I was going to do once I got there. But now you're there and you're at this fork in the road and you're going, you never brought me this far before or I've never let you. <laughs> yeah. But it's like that. All of that, right, that led up to this moment. Like it's all led up to this very moment and I hope that I can get this across tonight, everything that I feel inside of me. I pray that God makes up the slack for any of it that, that doesn't make sense, but it's like everything up until this point has led up to this very moment. 
Um, like this is the start of something. I sense so strongly that something is starting. Something is beginning. All throughout this week, I have been on a trip this week. Let me tell you, I didn't go anywhere, and I have been on the trip of all trips this week. And um, it started last Wednesday night, talking to my brother Brick over there. And ever since then, God has just journeyed me for this whole week. Um, times where people look at you and go, are you okay? And you're just not even in the room, you know? The TV's on and my family's all there. And my husband's like, are you all right? And, oh, yeah, I wasn't here. I'm sorry. <laughs> not being very present, right? Because you're, you're praying and you're caught up and you're thinking of things and you're reading and you're studying. And then Pastor Steve's message on Sunday, and I can't even go into it all, you guys, on everything that has just been like one thing after the other that God's just going, see, I just spoke that to you. See, I just did that. See, that, that. Pastor Steve's message, it's all about Jesus. And I'm going, yeah, right, that's it. But these last two weeks, you know, have been like a culmination of bringing us to this place. If we think of Wednesday two weeks ago and Sunday morning and then Wednesday night last week and then Sunday morning again, and it just added to the confirmations that God had been bringing, okay, and the words that had been spoken over me, yeah, but guess what? Words that have been spoken over each of you as well and words that God has brought out through different ways, through tongues and interpretation, through words up here during praise and worship, all of it, it's the start of something. And it seems odd to even speak of it right now because there's a little bit of like an obscurity to it right now. I don't have it quite pinned down yet. And I'm like, God, if you want to reveal like more of it before I get up there and talk, that'd be great. But this is where we're at, and this is all I have. So, <laughs> But it's like a starting, and it's a beginning, you know? And I just keep getting this word Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. It's the beginning. And what does Scripture say? In the beginning, God. And he's going to be all throughout it. He's going to be in every piece of it. He's orchestrating and ordaining every part of it. And I just said these very words to my mama. I was talking to her this week, just a couple of days ago, and I was filling her in on all those God moments of the last two weeks, you know, of Pastor Steve's messages and words that have been given and all of this and just everything like a timeline just going through my mind. And I was telling her all, and I says, Mom, I just sense like it's the beginning. I says, and I don't think it's just for myself. I think it, it's so much bigger and broader than that. It's for all of us. It's for God's people. It's for his church. It's for his bride. It's a beginning of a work that we have all been waiting for. And based on recent warfare that's been going on, I can say with surety that it's much bigger than any of us would even know at this point. And even if you can sense those same things that have been stirring inside of you, I'm going to tell you, I know that it's bigger than any of us could ever even imagine. And even though it is obscure for a little while, it's not going to be for very long. And the veil is going to be removed and everything's going to be clear. And we're going to go, ha -ha. we're going to be looking at each other like, are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> but for now, what do we do? We read, we study, we pray, we grow. We make sure that when that obscurity fades away, that we are completely ready, 100% in the moment. Just like 2 Timothy 3.17 says, fully equipped for every good work, right? We can't just sit there complacent and go, God's going to fully equip me. Guess what? There's some work to do on our part to become a fully equipped soldier. Somebody doesn't just sign the line and decide to become an army soldier and then everything just like instantly gets downloaded into them and they're instantly fit and in shape and, and know everything about warfare, no, they go through training and they prepare and they do all of these things. It's the same thing with us so that we can be equipped for every good work, possessing every power from heaven and every boldness from Holy Spirit that we need, every depth of trust and measure of faith like we talked about last week that is needed, right, to be fully equipped to take it on and to take it on full force and to carry it on then for as long as God calls us to do that. Have you ever, any of you felt, maybe prior to this time or especially right now, that any of this is relatable at all? Yeah, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> Either an, um, a 
I can't go back to where I used to be, but I don't know exactly where God's taken me. I'm in transition right now. Maybe we're saying that, or maybe it's more, I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like, but I know we're moving into something that we've never experienced before, but it's oh so good, right? And it brings to mind words of an old hymn, I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey now. And there is nothing you could bring me and dangle in front of me right now that I would trade for the things that I've been through in this life and the places that God has brought me from and the fire of hell that he's brought me through to be standing in this very place, this very moment with each and every one of you getting ready because it's all about the break loose. Amen. So I want you to think about stages of development. Like if you have children, think of it in that aspect, okay? The stages of development of your children. It could be in relationship that you had with others. Um, think of even just the, the difference in what you worship, what you like to listen to, to worship with. It changes after a while, right? You go through like cycles. Like I'll play the same five worship songs for weeks on end. Every day when I'm peeling potatoes, Isaac's like, do we have to listen to make me a house of prayer again? And I'm like, yep, it's my potato peeling song, and I'm getting my praise on, and if you don't like it, you can go in the other room, right? But there's, there's these cycles or these transitions, that are, even with the stuff we, we worship to, okay? But where we work or where we go to for what we look to for rest and refuge or where God has had us, even those things, right? And where God's leading us to, it's all transition, all right? And some is just this constant and steady transition, okay? Like the flowing of a current in a river. It's just like this continuous transition or this continuous growth or change. But others are more abrupt, and then they're more trialsome too, Maybe like a blind curve on a steep mountain path, right? And just all of a sudden it's there and it's transitioned and it came out of nowhere and you almost weren't ready, right? Or you weren't ready. <laughs> but it's transition nonetheless. And sometimes a season is short, right? And that season is so short that you barely even get set into like a rhythm while you're in it. And all of a sudden God changes it and you're, you're in something else then. But other times a season lasts so long that things become not stagnant, but so like routine, you know, they stay the same just long enough that you're almost comfortable in it. It just feels like natural, right? And you sort of forget for a moment that it's not always going to be that way. It's not always going to be that way at that particular time in your life. And again, this can be like in the natural areas of our life, you know, raising children and, and our relationships and things like that, but also the seasons of change and the transitions that God brings us through in our walk with him, comfort zones that are broken down, borders, right, that our trust has to fall far past where they've been erected already, and it's all for our good and for his glory, amen? Amen. So just like with the weather, the seasons change, don't they? But it's the change that keeps you excited. It's the change that keeps things from becoming mundane. I wouldn't want it to be mundane. I wouldn't want to live Groundhog Day every day over and over again, mostly because it's in February and it's cold, right? <laughs> but I wouldn't want the same thing every day. Yeah, it would be. And so we have season changes, right? Especially where we live. We get to experience them on all fronts. But it's good. And life does the same thing. Life doesn't just give us sunshine and roses. And I tell you guys that often. You know, if somebody promised you that when you knelt at the altar of salvation, life was going to be sunshine and roses from there on out, they lied to you. And I'm sorry. But just because every day isn't full of sunshine doesn't mean that we should despise the seasons that we're in if they're a hard season. We need not despair that they're going to last forever or that's going to be just our lot in life from there on out. And we need not to fear the ones that are ahead. Maybe we're in a really good season right now and we go, oh, you mean it's going to change? You mean I might start walking through something harder? i kind of apprehensive about that. But what was that word that came through Doug? He told me, I just kept hearing God say it over and over and over again. 
tell the church to stop with the fear and the worry and just look to me. Wow. Yes. Amen. If you only knew just today how many words have just lined up to complete perfection with what God is doing. Because each transition that happens is like a season that changes and it brings about something new. And knowing what that next season is or knowing that it's going to be upon us, then we do something very worthwhile, don't we? We prepare for it. Animals prepare for a season that's coming, right? Let's think of athletes who are in training. What do they do? They condition. If you want to be worth any kind of weight at what you do or a sport that you play, you condition all year round, don't you? It's not just the grit that you bring to the game on the day of the game. It's the conditioning that you put in all year long for those 10 games in the season, if it happens to be high school football, right? But it's often the difference then between a record-holding season or just being one of the no-names is whether you put in that work all year long and in the off-season. And so if you're not in year-round conditioning for playing your sport, then you're not going to be among the best of the best, right? right? And then if we turn that around to us as believers, if we don't take every day that is given to us and look at it as an opportunity to draw closer to our Father and to look to Him more and more and to learn of Him, read, study, pray, grow, read, study, pray, grow, then we're not going to be properly prepared for the next season that lies ahead of us. We can't sit back and passively watch as the seasons pass by. We have to take the opportunity in the current season to prepare for what's ahead. Amen? Amen. I feel such a great stirring in me that another season is upon us, and it's coming up quick, guys. With strong winds of the Holy Spirit, it's being blown into our current timeline right now. And knowing that it's what's sown in one season that is then reaped in another, I cannot help but to think that all the sowing that has taken place up to this point in time, it's been happening to bring about a harvest that we're going to see in the very, very near future. A time of harvest like we've never seen up to this point. It's going to be a time of harvest of souls coming into the kingdom. It's going to be a time of harvest of people coming back into the church. It's been prophesied over this house that God's going to bring all sorts, we'll just say. Amen. He's going to bring the lowly and he's going to bring the ones that, that have more. The haves and the have-nots, you might want to say. And in God's eyes, they're all the same. Amen. Because their sin cost his son his life no matter how much they were going to make in a year, right? And God's going to bring them all into the house. And when he does, and when that harvest begins to happen, it's going to be oh so important that we've prepared yeah. up until this time. And we must be prepared for the next season that's upon us. Think of this. The word tells us, right, that from the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Before the foundation of the world, God already knew that man was going to need a savior, that there was going to have to be a plan of redemption that was going to be put into place before he ever even created us. That's what I call preparing for the next season, right? Before the foundations of the earth, God already knew, and he saw the, man, the need that man would have. And he already, out of his foresight and out of his wisdom and out of his great love, he prepared for it ahead of time so that we could be made right so that we, in this moment, could all be here tonight. Amen. You might not have known until five minutes before service that you were going to be here tonight, but I can tell you that God knew it from the foundation of the world. Yeah. And you and me and each one of us here, we must prepare for the next season. And now is the time and today is that day. That we have to trust God with the unknown. And we have to trust God with the, even the parts that are unwelcomed by us or by our carnal man, right? We have to trust God in the unseen. There have been so many words spoken. There were words spoken over people this Sunday in service. 
about work that he has for them to do and it's going to be clear and the path is going to be ready then it's going to be a crisp work and it's going to be a black and white work and they're going to know what it is as soon as it comes yeah. and they're going to have to try to figure it out or guess or is this it or is this it it's just going to be clarity amen. complete clarity in the work that he has for yeah. them yeah. yes amen <laughs> three times now <laughs> There's words in general that have been given that require immediate action on our part, right? Amen. That put such a sense of urgency in us. God doesn't speak to us to shame us. God doesn't speak to us to, to um, have feelings of guilt rise up in us, right? But he will place a sense of urgency inside of us to take care of something that needs taken care of. And it happens to all of us, even your pastors. And that's why I say I was on a trip this week. Because in my living room and in my bedroom and in front of my mirror getting ready and in driving in my car and everywhere else that I was this week, I was taking care of some business with God. And it wasn't because he had shamed me and it wasn't because he made me feel guilty. It was because he said just the right thing to me that made me realize that there was another step to be taken in my trust, yes. and in the trust level that I had with him. And guess what? As soon as I said, yeah, like that night, I went home and started taking care of it. And yeah, okay. And you take that next step, and then poof, it all blows up for the good, right? Amen. Yeah, immediately God begins to show and to move and to to deliver in, in areas that maybe you've prayed for for a very long time and you've seen no answers even come about. And then you take care of that thing that he pinpoints in your life. Yeah. And you take that next step of trust that he asks you to take. <laughs> it's good, guys. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> We need like a board with words that like flashes back here. <laughs> but every transition in life and every season change that happens, it brings us out of our comfort zone. And that's a good thing, right? And that's exactly what times of transition do. The comfort of the now and the comfort of the known and the comfort of the predictable Okay, and when we begin to be taken out of that, it might seem scary or overwhelming or intimidating even, right? But that's why we need to have faith in those greater depths of truth and measures of faith that we've talked about, right? I think that's why he has us on this journey of trust these last couple of weeks, because he knows that this starting point is happening and we need to have the greatest measures of trust that we can have. And these measures of faith, remember we talked about those mile markers coming down the road faster and faster and faster, depending on how fast we like to drive, right? And we need to be able to have those greater measures of faith that we will travel further out of the boundaries of our comfort zone. What did we just sing tonight? Trust without borders. And he's asking us all over these weeks that we have been going through this process, do you yet trust me without borders? Or do you still have walls around certain areas where you go, I trust you this far, but don't ask me to cross that line. We have to have trust without borders. Every new beginning leads us into a different opportunity of having trust in our God. They're actually opportunities. I want us to see them as that. Wow, God is bringing me to a new opportunity to trust him further. That's like a paradigm shift in your brain, isn't it? Not, oh, I've never been this way before and I don't know what's going to happen and I'm intimidated and scared. Or, this is a new opportunity I have to trust God deeper. With a big old cheesy smile on her face, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy, but that's why he's bringing us through this process. And that's why he's giving us a couple yeah, weeks yeah. to get this all to marinate within our spirit, right? Because it's not that easy. And I don't want you to just plaster the big cheesy smile on your face. Our sister talked about being real. Yeah. And there are times where life, guess what? It gets real real, doesn't it? Yeah. 
yeah, when the doctor diagnosis comes in or when you get the phone call or when you realize you don't trust in every single area yet or whatever. Life gets real, real quick, right? Yeah. But this subject that God's had us on for three weeks now, right, because he just won't let me quit talking about it yet, okay, but it's because we need to have that trust without borders. And this, this focus tonight is on this trust through transition. And any of us that are transitioning in our walk with him or transitioning from one place that he's had us into a new place that he has for our feet to go, right? Or this season change. Maybe we've been in the same season for a long time and we can tell the wind is blowing and the season is changing and either the sun's getting warmer or the air's getting a little crisper depending on what season we're going into next. He's going to be there with us. He's the one that has orchestrated it and ordained it. Or if it's bad, he's the one that never leaves us or forsakes us in the middle of it. And nothing will be wasted with him. So some of us, or at certain points, we don't see the transition happening. And it's just like that that blind turn that I mentioned a moment ago. And other times, we don't know where that transition will take us. We just know that we're being uprooted from where we were. And we don't even quite yet see where we're going to be. You guys know God speaks to me in dreams. That's how he shows me different things that he has for me. And, and I had dreamt for a long time. I knew I was being taken out of the church where I had been firmly planted since I was 17 years old. But he didn't show me where I was going. He just kept showing me that I'd be leaving. And that just left a whole bunch of questions. Why am I going to leave and what's going to make me leave? And is my family going to be okay with us leaving? And, and what's next? I like to know what's next. I like everything wrapped up in a nice little package with a bow and like full instructions and details, step by step. Like, that's what I want. It's not what he gives me because then I wouldn't have to trust him, right? And so I just knew I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be leaving. Like, hopefully I'm going to be leaving with my whole family. I don't know, but I, I know I'm going to be leaving. And there's going to be a time where I'm not firmly planted in this house anymore. But I don't know why, and I don't know how, and I don't know where. I didn't know anything, except I wasn't going to be there. And dream by dream, month by month, new doors by new doors, he began to make it clearer and clearer and clearer. And the reason that he didn't show me all the way at the beginning was because I was to end up at mercy, right? And guess what? When he started giving me these dreams, mercy didn't exist yet. So he could have showed me mercy, and I wouldn't under... Well, he showed me mercy a lot in my life. But he could have shown me this mercy, right? And I wouldn't have known where he was even showing me because... What? You want me to be a Jehovah's Witness? I don't understand. (laughs) Can you imagine the confusion? (laughs) But... He brings us, and he brings us, and he brings us through. And if we just trust him, sometimes he only asks us to take a wee little step. Sometimes we only have to go this far, and we still get to see everything we've always seen, and the perspective isn't even really that much different, or the landscape around us, or anything. Sometimes it's just the smallest step. But sometimes he asks us to, like, jump head first, or to get out of the boat, right? Or to completely switch where we've been to where he has for us next. But if we, they're waving. I don't know. Okay, everybody look in that window. They want something, and I don't know what they want, and I'm not used to there being a window there. <laughs> right now, Miss Daryl Lee's embarrassed in there. I don't know what they're doing. I'm sorry. That's distracting. You might want to, like, put a curtain up. That's, yeah, they're in there, like, pageant waving to me. I don't know what they're doing. Oh. Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't know. So sometimes we might be right in the midst of this transition, but we don't even really know, like, we just know we're coming out and we don't know where we're going to yet, like that fork in the road, right? And then there's other times where we see it coming and he fully prepares us and he lays it all out for us, like the word that he gave to someone this week on Sunday, that it's just going to be clear and crisp and known and no needing to figure it out. And I got to admit, I was jealous. (laughs) Okay, God, I'll tell him, but... Couldn't have done that for me. No. <laughs> like, what gives? <laughs> yeah. But no matter which instance you fit in out of those three, right, we have to be sure that you trust God. 
and have the faith that he sees our end from our very beginning. There was someone that I was just telling, he's what I call one of my sons in the Lord, right? Like one of these ones that you get to watch him grow up in God. He's an adult, right? But from the time of his salvation, you're just watching the growth happen. And he was talking about there's this next step that he's going to be taking and he didn't see it coming and it took him by surprise and he doesn't know where he's going to go and what he's going to do. And I'm like, ha, ah, that's fun. And he just looked at me like, are you like on crack? Like, what's wrong with you? It's not fun. Yeah. And I says, no. I says, but you have to realize. I says, God already knows where you're going to end up. He's already seen all this. It took you by surprise. And I understand, like, I, I can put myself in your shoes. I understand that's hard and it's unsettling. I'm not discounting any of that. But you have to take comfort in knowing that God already knows where you're going to end up. God already sees you in that place. God already has it all prepared for you. You just haven't quite got it all figured out yet. And so that's why you pray for clarity and you pray for direction and you pray for these things. I says, and I'm, I'm going to pray that there's like a yellow brick road that just leads you right to the front door of where you're supposed to go so that you don't have to guess at any of it, right? That it'll just be clear for you. But this is another opportunity to trust him because he already knows. He already has it all figured out. He already has the, the, the path paved of it all, right? Yeah. yeah. Amen. And so we have to think of that with our own selves then. Mercy music can come to the front. <sighs> but think of this. Transition. And times of transition are not easy. I'm not saying that they are. And I don't want you to plaster the cheesy smile on your face. I don't want to see that. Okay? Yeah, be real. Holy Spirit will give us.